Our gathering hymn today is For All the Saints, hymn number 287.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, and we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We will read Psalm 24 um, responsively by half verse at the asterisk. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas. And made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And who stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not pledged themselves to falsehood 
They shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And such a reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Of those who seek his face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them up, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in power. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The second reading is a reading from Revelations. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is hymn number 551, Rise Up, Ye Saints of God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? 
Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. There are two hymns that I associate with All Saints Day. And of course, we're singing them today. And we sing them every All Saints Day. For all the saints, and I sing a song of the saints of God. Today is All Saints Day. And one of the ways that we know this is that everything is white. The white hangings on the altar, the white hangings on the ambo, the white stole. This is one of the five major festivals of the entire church year. And also a day where um, infants uh, and adults and anyone can be baptized on this day. It's one of the five big occasions of the year where you can baptize people uh, with a great celebration to go along with it. So welcome to All Saints Day. For all the saints, the song, the hymn, speaks of those saints who we probably think of first and foremost when we think of the saints of the church. Those brave soldiers of the faith, large figures from the past whose lives we remember and whose stories we tell. Stories that often ended in martyrdom. The lives and sacrifices of these saints are part of what we remember and celebrate on All Saints Day. And of course, for us, we remember St. Francis on this day, and we remember St. Clair on this day. And um, there are two saints for which we have named this church and our chapel. We also remember today the faithful departed whose names may not be remembered in the chronicles of church history, but whose lives and faith were no less significant in God's eyes. We remember these saints as well on All Saints Day. You and I will have the opportunity to name many of them in just a few moments in our prayers. I expect most of you uh, enjoy singing uh, the All Saints Day hymn. Uh, um, I sing a song of the saints of God, which we'll sing as we process out into the world today. I can't really imagine an All Saints Day without singing that song, that hymn, not just for my own sense of personal tradition's sake, but because this hymn reminds us of living saints. They lived not only in ages past. There are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school, 
or in lanes or at sea, in church or in trains or in shops or at tea. For the saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. I mean to be one too. But how? What does it really take to be a saint? A friend and colleague of mine, Chris Orr, defines a saint as a person who helps God take care of the world. A person who helps God take care of the world. A simple definition, but profound if you think about it. When we use the word saint in our daily speech, we tend to use it and mean too little. Or on the other hand, we can use it and mean too much. Remember the definition, a saint is a person who helps God take care of the world. Yet we often use this word offhandedly or more lightly. We say someone is a saint if they're patient. Or we call a man a saint if he is brave. Anyone whom we think is admirable at all for any reason, we call a saint. Well, how often and how often have you heard a woman described as a saint, especially, it seems like it's usually a woman, because she puts up with a challenging spouse? <laughs> or on a more serious note, we often refer to those who do difficult work as saints, those who teach, those who care for the terminally or mentally ill, those who nurture a parent with Alzheimer's. These people may be saints, but to automatically, just to automatically equate bravery, patience, or generosity alone with sainthood is to sort of minimize the lives of true saints. Saints are those people who, by their bravery, patience, or generosity, help God take care of the world. So not every hero is a saint. Not every philanthropist is a saint. It's not our place to judge whether an individual's life is worthy of sainthood or not. But it is our responsibility as Christians to hang on to the true meaning of the word. To hang on to the true meaning of the word. If we casually refer to every good or noble person as a saint, then we have sort of robbed the true saints, the big saints, of their godliness, of the meaning behind their work. To show reverence for the real definition of a saint is to show reverence for God. That that person is doing this to help God take care of the world. To show reverence for God, and at the very least, to remind ourselves and others of God's presence and care for the world. Saints are those people who help God take care of the world. This definition of a saint also reminds us, though, that saints are not only the famous martyrs of the past. If we, in our minds, confer sainthood only on those individuals who are, are, are known throughout history as people who gave their lives for the faith, we miss the meaning of sainthood in the other direction. We ask the word to mean too much sometimes. We set the bar too high sometimes. If we think of saints as only those individuals who were larger than life in the history of the church, then we remove the saints from our own everyday lives. Saints are all people in any time and place who help God take care of the world and the world's people. Saints are those who, honors God, who honor God's call to respect the dignity of every human being. Saints are all those parents and children who nurture one another in the Lord. Saints are those people who stop by to help any of the least of God's children in need. 
Saints are people who work to improve human stewardship of creation because it is God's sacred creation. Saints are more than just good human beings. Yet saints are not superhuman either. Saints are everyone, everyone who helps God take care of the world and its people. The words to I Sing a Song of the Saints of God were written by someone whom we now would call a stay-at-home mom. That's who wrote that hymn. She has said that they were written not for publication at all, but for use in our own nursery as an expression of the faith we were trying to give the children. That's the work of a saint, passing on the faith to children. She continues that this hymn was meant for use on saints' days to impress the fact that sainthood is a living possibility today. Remember the final line, the saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. And I mean to be one too, and you can be a saint too. All of us can be saints. In many ways, at the time of our baptism, we are made saints right then, because everything we do after we are baptized is in the name of God in some way or another. All we need to do is to help God take care of the world. No more and no less. But just remember, we just need to help. We just need to help. We're not up to do this all by ourselves. We don't have to save the world all by ourselves. God's already done that. And God will be with us to help us see what it is in particular that we are called to do to help God take care of the world and its people. Each of us has some gift that is useful for God's purpose. It may not always be easy, but God will give us whatever it is we need to do our part as a saint. God will give us patience and strength and courage, wisdom, a sense of humor, whatever it is we need to help God take care of the world and its people, God will give us. The hymn reminds us that sainthood is a living possibility today. It also reminds us that the saints of God followed the right for Jesus' sake. They toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. Saints do not just help the world. They help God take care of the world. These are the saints of God. And I mean to be one, too. Amen. Let us stand and affirm that faith as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who is the God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. These are the prayers of the people. If you are worshiping online, please enter your prayer requests now. In gratitude for all we have received, every perfect gift that comes from God above, we gather to offer our intentions, petitions, and thanksgivings to God. We pray for the Church, founded on the gift of your word, and for all who gather to worship, praise, and work. Pour out your blessings on Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our bishops, Lacey and Will, our priests, our, inter our interns who are being formed for ordained ministry, Linda and Leanna, and our vestry and lay leadership. May we who witness your saving acts in the world be ever grateful for every perfect gift. Which comes from God. We pray for the world, your greatest gift to us and the gift of all creation. We pray for the welfare of our planet and for the wise stewardship of our world. Bless and guide our President Joe, our legislative and judicial institutions, and the members of our local government. May they forever care for the people they represent and work for peace and justice. May we who witness your power in the world be ever grateful for every perfect gift. We pray for the work of our church in the world. As we enter this season of intention and focus on the gifts that we give, inspire us to be generous with our time, our talent, and our treasure. May we who witness the impact of our gifts in our community be grateful for every perfect gift. We pray for our neighbors and all who need our requests and all who need or request our prayers. We remember the sick, the lonely, and the suffering, those oppressed domestically or abroad, and those in prison for all who give care and comfort to those in need, for the poor and those who sleep on our streets, for those we name now, aloud, or in the silence of our hearts. Barbara, Bill, Andy, Carrie, Donna, Ken, Susanna, Holly, are there others? We we pray for those whose needs are known to you alone. May we who witness your healing in the world be grateful for every perfect gift. Come. We pray for those who have died. May they rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Adelina Iseppi, Helen Campbell, John Clark Williams, 
Victor Stanley, Ariana Battelle. Are there others who have died recently or in the past that you would like to name on All Saints Day? Dr. Dr. Ron Check. May we who witness your eternal love in the world be grateful for every perfect gift which comes from God. It is impossible to number the blessings we have received, the many gifts that we have been given, and those we share with the world. For what are you thankful today? For this church family, for our leadership, for our visitors today, for the blessing that the blessing box has been to so many. May we who witness our gifts at work in the world be grateful for every perfect gift. With grateful hearts, we thank you, abundant God, for hearing the faithful prayers of your people, granting them grace and love and blessings for every perfect gift. Amen. Amen. We pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Not so with you. Peace, everyone. We extend our air hugs and our welcome to our visitors today. Thank you for being with us. And um, for those watching online, air hugs as well. And we really look forward to when you can come back to church. And uh, we miss you and we would love to see you. You get to see us every week, but we don't get to see you. So come visit us sometime and sit way back here in this empty corner. <laughs> and you will be safe, I promise. <laughs> Please be seated. So as a reminder, our interns today are at the Iona School for Ministry, which is once a month for the duration of while they're here. And I got to uh, be the chaplain for that yesterday and teach one of the classes after all these years. Um, I got to do that last night. So that was so the regular chaplain could go off to New York City and be there for the baptism of her husband's first grandchild ever while she has like 10. So um, anyway, it was a fun opportunity, of course, to see Leanna and Linda uh, throughout the weekend. So that was cool. Uh, what other kinds of announcements do we have for today? So we need to uh, get some more things happening. <laughs> yes, Karen. 
We need, we have decided, uh, this is about prayer shawl, Guru. Uh, we've not had very good attendance for months and months and months. Uh, we're going to suspend it at least until into 2022, and we may rethink it at that point too. We're invest I'm looking into some other things, and if anybody has any ideas what they want to do or if they want to lead it, it'd be okay too. Um, I just, it's, it's hard to come in and to drive 60 miles around the ground truth and nobody shows up. Or, it just, I have, I have other things to do. <laughs> so, uh, think about it, let me know. Uh, we're investigating the prayer shelf group at St. Thomas Aquinas, the Catholic Church, which meets in a weekday. Uh, just so we can continue knitting and crocheting with people who actually know how to do it more, you know. I'm not a very good teacher at it, so I'm just not, not I don't knit at all. But uh, just think about it and pray about it. Let's see what we can pick it up or put it down or whatever. Help. Thank you. <laughs> we do, uh, our prayer shawl guild has also made uh, uh, gift uh, things that go in the visitors' bags and uh, that are like uh, prayer cloths. And so the great, really great thing about knitting and crocheting is you can do it at home alone with no one there. <laughs> and still bring it to the church to be blessed as a prayer shawl or as a, um, a gift in the gift bags. Uh, do we have a stewardship talk today? Yes, okay, then let me hurry and quit talking while you walk up here to the AMBO, and, uh, which is a combination pulpit and lectern, by the way, while she walks up here, it's called an AMBO, and we have an AMBO. And um, okay, also Bible studies Tuesday at 10, and Paris Zoom meeting is Wednesday at 7. Thank you, Connie. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I didn't really prepare comments because I didn't want to stand up here and appear like I had written everything out. I think it's better when it just comes from my heart. And uh, you'll soon be getting a letter from me that is very much from my heart. But I think the most important thing that I can say to you about this year's stewardship campaign is, you know, that the whole theme of every gift is such a great theme because St. Francis and each one of you is such a gift to me. In my situation, I'm a single adult. I've been single all my life. And I have lived away from my family of origin for a long, long time. And that's not always easy. But my faith community makes it easy. You see, you become my family. You become the people that I count on when no one is here for my family to help me with my struggles. Um, knowing you're here, just knowing you're here, is the greatest gift of all. And St. Francis itself is such a gift to the community. All the work that we do in outreach, all the things that we give to, all of the special projects that God has laid on our hearts for a church as small as ours, we do great things. We are becoming the saints of God because God has called upon us to do these great things. And right now during COVID, times are hard. And you know, with not being able to everybody to be together all the time, um, it's become even harder. I think one of the things I miss the most is our first Sunday lunch. You know, what a loss that has been for us because that's a time when we can truly be in fellowship and, and just welcome one another and 
tell one another our stories and what's going on and laugh together and enjoy a meal together, which St. Francis loves to eat more than about any church that I've ever been to. <laughs> so what does all of this have to do with stewardship? Well, as I said earlier, you've become my family. And if you're my family, what do I need to do to support my family? Well, what I need to do is to help pay the bills. I need to keep, help keep the building in repair. And I need to help keep the doors open and the air conditioning working. And I need to continue to help us to be able to continue to do our outreach and to do all of the work that we do in our community. And so what I'm going to ask you today is to think about the gift that St. Francis is to you. And what's that worth? And how much are you willing to give to support your family, to keep the lights on, and to keep the doors open, and the air and the heat working, and to keep us able to have fellowship once things return, and to be able to continue to do all of the ministries that we normally do. Um, I know that I will very much do my part in that, and I hope that you will join me, and I hope that you'll really reflect on, with every gift, what a gift St. Francis is to you. Thank you. O oh Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Our offertory hymn is Soon and Very Soon, Soon and Very Soon.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my blood which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Francis, Claire, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. This is the table of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come, because it is the risen Christ who invites you. It is the risen Christ who wants to meet you here. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let the rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All the broken, lift up your face. Oh, wonder, come home. You're not too far. So lay. So lay down your 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lest I ever need to be reminded that I am human, today is a prime example. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let us now turn to page 293 in your hymnal to sing, I sing the song of the saints of God. And then we're going to sing, ye watchers and ye holy ones, two verses. But we're going to sing all of I sing the song of the saints of God. And I, I, must, need, I, I must need some help. So anyway, we're going to sing 293, Mercy Me. Thank you. 